Hey guys, it's me again, the Metaverse Explorer. This is a big episode with Grapes Solana Alpha. Don't mind the shadow behind me here, I'm still trying to figure everything out. So this episode is a big one. We're gonna start with the TVL in Solana ecosystem at the moment. Remember, we have some timestamps all the way below here. So if you're specifically interested in one topic, that's the place for you to go to. We're gonna start with the TVL to begin with and then the Synthetify tutorial that uh, has now just been released on mainnet. We're gonna look at the new double dip orca pools. We're gonna look at some Soul Farm education for compounding interest, which is really great. The the PDF, the document file they gave us is really, really well written. We'll have a look at that. We'll look at the Larix borrowing rate, which is uh, exceptionally high at the moment. We're going to look at the Star Atlas week, which they have some new ships and some new material coming out. Whale's friend did find some fab punk anomalies, which is very interesting. We'll have a look at that. Even, I ha even I'm concerned about that at the moment. Uh, we have Solen protocol increasing their uh, deposit values. Parrot, uh, Parrot is actually uh, deploying some of their treasury into port finance, into other um, assets, into other uh, pl protocols for people to use. And, um, and we have a new token coming to the Solana ecosystem, which is the Marinade token. And hint, hint, there is an ebb drop if you have used some M M Sol and Marinade token Sol. And then we're going to end the episode with some NFT volumes and upcoming NFT projects. All right, guys, you know what to do. If you're not sure, it's just up here. Let's go. Having a quick look at the DeFi Llama total value locked for Solana at the moment. We are at 10.69 billion. We just approached nearly all time high, which is really interesting to see. I guess that's really relative. Depends how BTC runs. If it runs all the way up, every other shitcoin runs with it. And so I'm not calling Solana a shitcoin. I'm just saying, you know, TVL is slightly relative, you know. So first off, we still have Saber leading the charge with Sunny with a close second. I still really don't like Sunny. I don't like it at all. Radium close second, Orca close third, and Tulip is also going strong as all farms, $700 uh, million, which is quite a lot uh, for a compounding service. We'll go all the way down, Marinade Finance has ticked up a little bit, an increase in 18%, possibly because there is the rumors of a token airdrop for Marinade. Not rumors, there actually will be a token airdrop, and I'm going to cover it right here. Okay. Pirate Protocol, 400, 000, 400 million, sorry, and we're going down the list, not much has changed really, Larix and Solend. Solend has it, uh, recently increased their deposit values, which is interesting. Uh, Mango Markets are still going, Fab Punks, we'll look at the Fabric uh, ecosystem and see what's happening there. All right, let's go. All right, ladies, so we're going to start with Synthetify tutorial at the beginning. This is Synthetify. It is a synthetics protocol. What does that mean? It means you can actually deposit something as collateral. In this case, they currently accept an SNY, the protocol's native token, and you can mint certain synthetic assets. Now, what are synthetic assets? They can be absolutely anything you think you want. Uh, who's going to win the next presidential race? Um, is it a stable coin that's pegged to another stable coin? Is it uh, another form of BTC that lives on SNY chain? Let's have a look at some of the synthetics they actually offer at the moment. They offer XUSD, XBTC, XSOL, XFTT, XETH. So these are synthetic assets that live in the synthetic protocol at the moment. So that being said, uh, we can't trade these assets outside of synthetics at the moment. So this is a closed system. Once these assets, XBTC, XSOL, can be traded outside of the synthetics protocol, this drives value to the underlying um, collateral that has been provided, which is SNY. Uh, it's unknown if they will be accepting other forms of collateral, but uh, let's go ahead and show you how it actually works to deposit, uh, mint, burn, and go on from there. We'll look at the current volume. It's been from zero for a while as it's just launching now, and it's currently shot up to about $42,000 uh, staked at the moment. This is just uh, in SNY tokens. Let's go ahead to the staking section. I have a small uh, amount. Let's go ahead and deposit that. So this is my available to deposit, 0 0.3. I'm gonna hit my max, click deposit, and approve the transaction. You might have to create a token account over this side for you to actually deposit. Awesome, and we can see that on the um, blockchain. Now, we've deposited uh, some synthetic tokens, so we can actually mint XUSD, which is a synthetic backed USD stable coin. So let's see how much can we mint. I'm going to mint my max, and I'm going to mint 0 0.4. Let's approve that transaction and it's been minted, awesome. So now we can see my collateral ratio is, uh, my liquidation threshold is 0 0.625. Uh, that's not much, my stake value is currently $2. You can withdraw your SNX, but you will have to pay back your XUSDC that you just minted by yourself. 
um, and there's a reward section of course for your subscription the current APR is 300% so if you have some S and Y sitting around in Soul Farm anywhere else here's a good place to do it the Net protocols own token now let's have a look at Soul Farm at the moment what's happening there with S and Y so over here in Soul Farm we see S and Y currently has a utilization rate of a hundred percent everything every lending uh, token that everyone is giving to Soul Farm in regards to SNY, it is 100% all being used. This poses a really big issue, especially for Wales Friend, when you are trying to withdraw your own SNY from this pool. Too bad, it's actually being used by people who are leveraged yield farming. So you will not be able to withdraw your SNY from Soul Farm if it's got 100%. You'll have to wait until someone stops leveraged yield farming or someone adds more SNY to the pool and then you can withdraw your own SNY from that. This is a small drawdown that's happening in Soul Farm at the moment. It doesn't make me uh, bearish on Soul Farm at all. It just means that, hey, you can get 100% uh, uh, you can get 100 APR on your SNY. Um, but this is, of course, lower than what you can actually get at the protocol itself which gives you 300% APR so remember when you get APR you can withdraw that compound that to make it APY okay next topic moving on to Orca and its double dip pools we can see that uh, the double dip pools are about to end on October 8th is currently 7th at the moment so if you are in any leveraged positions you might really want to consider um, your price at the moment because Orca has shot down to $12.92 this is slightly lower I remember it seeing at $17 recently um, that being said let's have a look at the staking uh, the staking API at the moment is 73% whereas on Frankim you can be lending your Orca for 116% there are different uh, lending protocols as well, such as Soul Farm, where you can lend your Orca. Um, let's look at the new uh, staking pools, the double dip pools that will be coming soon. I think they are all the way at the bottom. Right, there we go. So we're starting with uh, All Bridge USDC, which is the Happy Project. This is a uh, bridging uh, tool that have bridged a, a significant amount from ETH over to Solana. We talk about Kuro, not really knowledgeable about them. I got to find out about them. If you know about Kuro, write it down below. Thank you. MSOL, which is, uh, you know, Marinade's MSOL. So that's uh, going to be in the highlight for a while now. Um, Orca MSOL, yeah, it's giving some liquidity back to Orca and uh, Solana as well. MSOL and SOL, that's uh, really uh, normal, kind of. Uh, Staked SOL, which is, I think, from Staked or Lido Finance, I'm not sure. And then we have Cypool. Cypool is a new protocol. It's not quite new, actually. It's been around for a while, but uh, they're making some new waves. All right, so that's it for now. Let's have a look at the next one. Really sorry about the lighting, guys. It's a work in progress. So Sol, Sol Farm actually released a really, really good educational uh, Medium article telling us about lending and yield vaults and leveraged yield farming. I'm going to leave the link down here below so you can see as well. It's incredibly good read and the actual document they provide you is exceptional. So the beginning with, I love this, uh, Pepe. Hello, reading Pepe. You know, if you're going to be a DeFi yield farmer, you got to be like Pepe. you got you got to know your stuff, you know? All right, so this is the interesting thing I want to show you. So they, they just give you a small breakdown of the features and strategies of lending vaults and leverage yield farming. Kind of the returns, uh, obviously lending is quite low because you you have no impermanent loss, you're, you get to claw back your um, your tokens very easily, whereas leverage yield farming is super high. You know, you, you, you have impermanent loss and also liquidation risk. So this is um, really, really good. Um, so let's say they give you some examples, Ray Serum APY. So on lending only, you'd be able to get a 63% APY, whereas in Vault, it'd be 67 because it's auto compounding and there's also emissions on top. With leverage yield farming, you'll get <laughs> a lot more, which is nearly 300, 300% APY. But with this comes increased uh, risks as well. Increased reward, increased risk, you know. So at the bottom here, this is the... Um, of course, this is also the tulip tokens. Every every um, token you put into Soul Farm generates its own two token, tulip token, two USDC, um, two t USDT, uh, two Radium. And you can find these in Soul Farm even if you want. So let's go ahead and look look for the actual document here. Please check out our in-depth article here or Google Sheet Calculator here. The Google Sheet Calculator is amazing and I would recommend everyone uh, read this. It's got um, everything on the bottom that you actually need to look for. So it's got you uh, pseudo neutral delta positions, uh, multiply your gains in a bull market, how to gain in a bear market, and there's little scroll right and there's heaps more for you to go and find. So they give you even calculators where you can put in your specific amounts and see what the price changes will be. And they give you in-depth uh, graphs up to what, you're, what, what you want. Um, there's, um, there's one specific one that I really liked was 
how you can be uh, 2x leverage on the token and it's similar to just holding the token. Whereas if you're 3x, you might be uh, shorting something. This is slightly above my uh, pay grade. So I leave all this to the leveraged yield farmers out there. I'm a humble lender, humble farmer. I just want to grow my tulips, grow my USDC. All right, let's go on to the next topic. Shout out to Oven Punch in the Solana Alpha chat uh, Discord, uh, where he shared us an image where Solana is actually being paid to borrow. So this is on Larix, the uh, little protocol that everyone has slightly forgotten about, and the founder was shilling his token all over Twitter. So currently, let's go have a look at uh, Larix and see what's happening. So they still have a TVL of, uh, oh, that's my supply balance at the moment. Uh, let's have a look at the total TVL. There's still 44 million in, uh, and they got 3 million in TVO. That's slightly lower. Compare that to Solfarm or any other lending protocol on um, Solana, and it's not that high, really. Let's go look at the dashboard. You can still deploy some Solana and earn 5.2%. You will get 0.5% in Solana, plus an extra 5% on top in the Larix token. Now, do you want this Larix token? Does it really matter if you have it? If the protocol shoots up to the moon, it might be good to have a little small bag as a moon bag. But let's look at the borrowing side as well. So you you have to pay 5.77% to borrow, but they also give you 14.58%. So in the end, you will end up being paid Larix to um, actually borrow Solana at 0.95%. 908%. Same thing goes for a few other things such as FTT, um, but everything else seems to be in the positive. So this is a small strategy if you want to experiment a little bit. If you haven't interacted with the Larix protocol at all, why not give it a small try with a really, really small, tiny amount? Okay, I don't endorse this project. I know nothing about them. Do not listen to people on the internet. <laughs> Next episode, next, <laughs> next episode, let's go to the next topic. All right, so moving on to the next topic, Star Atlas has just updated their um, high octane October medium article with this new artwork. This is a uh, really nice artwork where uh, a lot of people are going crazy in Star Atlas over it. So they have a few things that they're actually going to be doing. Their doors to the mini game has just opened and you can register your factions right now. We're going to have a small look at it. You can look at the trailer, which just launched as well. A lot of people were unhappy with it because they were expecting gameplay, but uh, without realizing the game is actually not going to be out for a couple of years. The mini game isn't even out yet, but they want gameplay of the game right now. This is just a trailer gameplay. It's, the, the, it's not really a, a full game, you know? And there's also ship drops as well. So they've, this is what they've changed. Um, two brand new ships, the PSF4. Uh, it's a rare. It costs 2.5k. There's only 2,000 of them. And we have the Ecos Grenadier, which is an epic. There's, it's going to cost $8,000, and there's only 750 of them. So it'll be interesting to see how many people have budget for this now, now that uh, the market wasn't looking as good uh, previously, if they've, if they've been able to sell some Atlas or Polis to get some capital for this. All right, guys, so if you come to the Solana Grape uh, NFT Discord, we talk about some NFT projects that are currently minting, and one of them is the Fabric Mint, the Fab Punks Mint. Something has actually happened in the Fabric Minting process. Every Fab Punk that was minted under uh, Fab Punk 1000 was actually rare. Everything, everything under 1000 had a rarity trait, whereas everything above uh, 1000 was slightly more common. And the more up in numbers you go, up to 10,000, you will get uh, very, very common punks, which means they would be slightly worthless or well below mint price. Now, that being said, this is actually kind of a stab in the back into the community of the Fabric ecosystem because the uh, people who provided liquidity first in the LP pools were designated to receive some air an airdrop of a Fabric punk. And now these Fabric punks will be super, 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 super common. They will not have any rarity traits with them at all, uh, which basically means you know they're, they're, they're really common. What, you go into these pools because you, there's a chance that you might be able to receive a rare punk and this is how the community is built you know but uh, at the moment it seems like um, every uh, fab punk under 1000 will have some kind of rarity or, or at least an increased probability of having a rare attribute if you have one go and have a look at them this is uh, slightly concerning in the fabric team and it hasn't been addressed yet we're still waiting on commentary from the fabric team 
Okay guys, Solend did currently increase the uh, debt ceiling onto some of their tokens that they accept. Solana has now been unlimited, USDC unlimited, USDT unlimited. The only thing that is currently limited is FTT and Radium. Let's go ahead and go to the Solend protocol and see how much they have. There is a supply of 147 million being supplied and people are borrowing 58 million. Now this is uh, a slightly higher on the uh, you know lower end of the uh, lending borrowing protocols. And that being said, remember Solend does not have a token at the moment. There might be a token later on, but um, not at the moment. So hey, if you are token hunting, it might be a good idea to start depositing or using this protocol just a little bit with a little bit of funds. You might be eligible with, for some airdrops. I currently don't know if there will be an airdrop, but hey, we're in Solana. We want to test out every protocol, don't we? Okay, next topic. All right, so the Party Parrot did say they are investing 10 million from their treasury into the uh, USDC Earn Vault and also Port Finance Project Larix and Solent Protocol. So remember, if Solent does get an airdrop, Party Parrot will get some of that airdrop and that airdrop will be distributed to PRT stakers. So this is, you know, uh, composability of the blockchain. Uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, Parrot Protocol. They're currently giving 10.88% on their PRT staking. So if you have any PRT, remember to be Staking it. Uh, a lot of people are really unhappy with Parrot at the moment because they raised $70 million um, in a 10% offering of the token PRT. That gives the entire uh, fully diluted valuation $700 million, which is slightly higher than some people would anticipate for a fledgling uh, NFT, um, uh, sorry, a, um, a fledgling lending and borrowing collateral uh, protocol on Solana. $700 million in my view is slightly higher than what it should be. So you will find the token has been selling for um, lower than the IDO price. There's um, it's not that much transparency in the system at the moment. We don't know how much the um, the original founders or the original uh, investors actually got the PRT token for. Uh, if you have this information, just put it in the comments down below for me. Okay. All right, so Marinade Finance will soon be releasing its token. I think it was on the 7th of October. By the time this video is out, the token should probably probably be out and you've probably gotten an airdrop. So let's have a look at some of it. Marinade Finance is a liquid staked uh, a token. So you'll be providing your uh, Solana. They're going to stake it to someone on the validator system and you get an MSOL, which is Marinade uh, Stake Sol. You'll be able to use that in DeFi or any other you know projects around Solana. They're currently giving you 6.2% for giving them your Solana. Let's have a look at some of the pools around Solana that you can do. The Sol, uh, MSOL and Sol, which is yet to launch on Orca, is uh, not started yet. That's why it sound, looks like it's infinity. The MSOL Orca is currently going with a hundred. Oh, I lost my page. Anyway, we'll go back to the medium and have a look. So this is the marinade token. that's going to serve you the tastiest token you're going to see. Okay. It's launching on the 7th of October. There's going to be different ways you can earn this either through liquidity mining. Every week there will be 0.17% being given out in MSOL. The pools that they're going to be incentivizing are MSOL and USDC pools. This is likely to be on Orca or maybe on Radium. We'll find out. 31% is going to go to MSOL and SOL. And there will be one-time offers. Every time there is 3 million staked, um, they're going to uh, be giving out 3.5 million marinade tokens. Every time the um, we get 5 million SOL staked, they're going to be giving out 5, 7 million marinade tokens. It says it loaded. No. And now this is the retroactive claim. I'm going to read this out so it's very clear. We have set up 15,000 marinade to be distributed as retro retroactive claim. And we currently added five more million on top of that at the last sprint of the marinade launch. Um, so the new cap is 3 million sold. Okay. Let's go have a look if there's any more details. Uh, we will supply, apply a flat marinade per day distribution rate. Um, and uh, the amount of uh, marinade to claim will depend on the M sold balance in time used in DeFi or held in your wallet an internal MSOL and SOL liquidity provision. So it's not about having it at a certain um, time. It's about in time over a period of time. How long have you been using MSOL or how long have you been utilizing MSOL? So if you have any MSOL anywhere, it's very likely you will have an airdrop. So good luck to you. Well done. All right, guys, we'll end it with the TVL of NFTs at the moment, which is sitting just under $1 billion, $1 billion in NFTs on Solana alone. Loan. Um, this is uh, just incredible, isn't it? Uh, not long ago, Solana didn't have many NFTs, but now it's a bustling business place for everyone to make NFTs and for you to get scammed. So Solana monkey business is still leading at 875 uh, floor sold. This price has decreased by 10%. This is not really worrying at the moment, seeing as the 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 
the soul monkey with the crown, I think, and it was a zombie soul monkey. It, so it's one of the top 10 highest selling NFTs uh, on Ethereum and Solana. So that, that's going to be roaming around the, the Twitter for a while. DJ Apes is still going strong at 65 soul and Galactic Geckos. There hasn't been much change. Meerkat Millionaires are coming up there, but uh, they don't seem to have much momentum. They might start drowning down soon. And going all the way down, Infinity Labs is still strong. Uh, Soul Punk's still going, Salama's Piggy Soul Gang. All of these other ones are going to be around. But the, the trick is to pick the ones that are actually going to stay long term. So usually something in the top 10 has a, a good chance of staying there. Definitely Solana bu uh, Monkey Business and DGen Ape Academy. Uh, Galactic Geckos, haven't really seen much about them. And Aurora will be around until the game actually starts going out. So that being said, you know I am a big fan of Star Atlas. If Star Atlas NFTs were listed on this marketplace, there would be nothing else in comparison. I think at the moment the highest uh, person in uh, Star Atlas, their TVL is $260 million. That's just one account. And there's different factions that these guys are in and they have a shit ton of money. So nothing compared to this NFT market. All right, so let's have a look at some of the upcoming projects. I haven't really looked in this one, Perky Panda Club. Soju Key, Cyber Pharmacy, all these look very generic. Why isn't it loading? Let's load it again. You really got to find an NFT project that stands out to you. Otherwise, everything is, is just the same. It costs about $4,000 on, um, on uh, like a marketplace for someone to come and make these uh, artworks for you. So unless it's unique, unless it starts a trend, then it's not really worthwhile investing your time or resources into it. It has to start a trend like the Loot Project or you know fab or Punks in the beginning. So Salacious NFT, yeah, it's a cute dog, but what else does it actually do? Um, yep, 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 nothing. Oh, of course it's the poop. Of course there's magic Solana shits. This is where we've gotten to, guys. There are magic Solana shits. Um, there's 69, 69 cute smelly shits releasing on Solana. 1008. If you are focused on shitting on the competition and creating a long-term viable product with input from the community, are you serious? Are you serious? And you know what? Some people might actually mint this just for the shits and geeks. Just for the shits and geeks. I, for one, will be staying very far away from all the shits and the gigs. I'll see you later. Oh, I really wanted to apologize again for the camera quality. I don't know what has actually happened. I'm going to really investigate. I don't know if it's something to do with the green screen or the lighting setup, but all the previous videos have been good. I don't know why this camera quality has been terrible. So I apologize um, and I will be better. See you later.